Hey, Brett. Ethereum's fluctuating so much. Yeah, it is. It feels like a balloon blown up by an asthmatic. You can't say that on a podcast. Too late. Welcome to WTF is Crypto Space. I'm Brett. And I'm Chad. This podcast is all about the crypto space. Now, today we're going to do something different. I'm going to do the CoinMarketCap.com update. Ooh, so, somebody's graduated. Wow, well, I graduated from last week. Uh, the CoinMarketCap.com update is for all your crypto space updates. So you can go to CoinMarket.com and check that out. That's the website that we use. So the top 10 currencies, get this, Brett, the top 10 currencies... The cryptocurrencies this week are all green. All green. What does that mean? Which, What's green mean? Well, it's better than red because <sighs> red is not. Red is the bad one, and green is the good. Think, think, hundred dollar note. Good. Good. Don't think green stoplight. Is good. Green, green is, is good. good. Greed is good. No, I think I think you find it's greed is good. Green is good. Okay, so we're going with green is good. Lock it in. Yes. And uh, also, the entire market has reached $94 billion market cap oh, for the crypto huge. space. Uh, that's m- m- like $10 billion more than last week. Wow. Am I doing good so far? <laughs> Absolutely um, fantastic. Keep it up. And then the last the last thing um, is that not last week, there was the, it was the top six that had reached the $1 billion club. Just a week later... Now the top eight have reached the wow, $1 billion that is huge. club mark. Eight. Eight. So it's, it's getting crazy. Lots of people getting in. It's a good time to get in. So um, now for the, the second part of this, we all like this segment. It's called Fuck. What does Fuck stand for, Chad? It stands for Frequently Asked Questions. Uh, today's topic, we have chosen to do Ethereum. Ooh. So last week was Bitcoin. This week is Ethereum. So... Brett, what is Ethereum? Okay, so simply Ethereum is an open software platform based on blockchain technology that enables developers to build and deploy decentralized applications. Now, last week, Mike, got a little, we pushed forward too quickly. Let's just break down that entire thing that you just said. So open sure. source, open software platform, open source platform. Does that mean like, is that where people can just... They have some like a program and they can use it to do whatever they want and everyone else can use it at the same time. Yeah, it's uh, open. Okay. The other thing I want to <laughs> ask is blockchain. Now, we've mentioned this before, but sure. what is blockchain technology? All right. So, blockchain technology is a public ledger of all of the cryptocurrencies transactions that have ever been carried out. Okay. So, it's constantly growing and it's completed in blocks, right? And then each block is added to the new set of records. Okay, so can you give us an example, like um, something people know, like a bank or something like that? Sure. Well, let's take the old debt-based fiat banking system as an analogy, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, so the blockchain is like a full history of your banking transactions. Okay, so Bitcoin, Ethereum, the transactions are entered chronologically, okay? Just the way the bank transacts and enters your transactions. Okay. Just like your individual bank statements. So that's what a block is. Like a block is every, like your individual bank statements and the entire blockchain is like all of those ever existing in one place. You got it. Well done. Now, I, I did some little research. I like to do a kind of bit of like to, to kind of sound like I know what I'm talking about. So um, here's a quote from Ethereum.org. You guys can go to this website yourself. Ethereum is a decentralized platform that runs smart, contracts applications that run exactly the way they're programmed without possibility of downtime censorship fraud or third party interference like hacking or middlemen in that sense mm. we're going to break down most of that statement um about uh mainly third party interference in next week's podcast um but i wanted to find decentralized because i think decentralized that means to non-central that's like the <laughs> allocate like to non, it's nonsense. Okay, non-central. all right. Let me try. Let me have a crack at it. Decentralization okay. is the process of redistributing, okay, functions, power, 
people or things away from a central location. So sharing the love. Bit like Bob Marley of the uh, coin <laughs> the token. Bo- the, the hippie movement of, <laughs> uh, of, the, of, co- of currency. All right, so uh, the next segment in our show is... In the news. All right, so I, I went through a few. Okay, went through a few to try and find a couple, but I've got a couple of Ethereums and a Bitcoin out there. So here we go. So okay, okay. meet Brave. Okay, so Brave is a, a new US startup. Okay, so they raised $35 million in just 30 seconds. Okay, so that's Holy like... Holy moly. WTF, right? So that's W-T-F. two blocks. If you're running a block size of, say, 15 seconds, like this one was, that's two blocks, okay, wow. for the whole initial coin offering or what people know as ICO. Well, but the, the initial coin offering, is that kind of like when you go to church and they give you one plate at the start and then a plate at the end to put more money? So this that's the we're doing the start of church right now. <laughs> sure. And the former <laughs> chief executive of Mozilla has raised $35 million for his new startup, okay? So, all thanks to this coin that the company created itself, and that's the whole thing. So, ICO is like the new the new world of IPO, which is initial public offering. You've got wow. now the web browser startup Brave, which was founded by the technologist and former uh, Mozilla um, head, Brendan um, Ike, launched an initial coin offering, making use of the blockchain to raise funds for the next stage of its growth. Okay. That's incredible. I wow. know, crazy, right? And yeah. so the ICO is it involves selling investors a cryptocurrency which has value in relation to other cryptocurrencies in the crypto space, like Bitcoin or Ethereum. So it, that's kind of like uh, their value of their cryptocurrency um, is kind of like getting the Aussie dollar and, say, trading it for the Japanese yen. Yeah, absolutely. And for this offering, Brave created its own currency called... Uh, a basic attention token, or BAT, right? Their own BAT, man. It sold 1 billion BAT, which is equivalent to 156,250 Ethereum, or 35 million US dollars. So that is huge into the crypto space. That's so massive. So money. many things are happening. So, so so many people are getting in the market. So many people are, are, are developing their own crypto Yeah, look, and, and then you've got some who like to show off. And the, probably a good example of that is the next one. So France's newly elected president brandishes a Bitcoin hard wallet on TV. Wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. Last week <laughs> you told me that like Bitcoin is not a, like, you can't physically, t- how does he have a hard copy of like a, what like how wallet hard no that is a really good question, Chad, and we're going to look at that one in the next episode. Okay, I will sit on the edge of my seat till then. I will not breathe till then. <laughs> <laughs> so even though the photo inspired many crypto enthusiasts to become excited that the French's, the France's uh, new president might be a tech geek, there's not much information yet about his stance on Bitcoin or his level of experience. But, but... The mm-hmm. photo generated a 1,500 upvotes on Steemit.com. Do you know what Steemit.com is, Jim? Yes, I got I got turned on to this. All right, so Steemit, uh, this is for anybody at home who wants to get involved and just wants to sort of dip their toe in the crypto cryptocurrency, crypto space. You can actually go on to Steemit, that's S-T-E-E-M-I-T.com, S. T E E M I T dot com, and what it actually is, it's kind of like, it's kind of like creating clickbait, but you get cash like directly for it. Those things are called Steam. It's Steam Power and stuff like that. So go over to S T E E M I T dot com. We'll have the link in the description below. But you can go to that website, have a look around, poke around. We'll talk a little bit more about it next next episode. But that is an amazing platform. Oh, oh, Brett. Quickly, quest on yes. the presses, quickly. Um, right, rip that off. <laughs> All right, what, there's one more story, yeah? Yep. All right, so business in the age of Ethereum. Here we go. The intent of Ethereum is to transcend <laughs> those limitations by creating a blockchain protocol within its own native program language, which is called Solidity. Wait, wait, that is so cute. It's like, hey, Solidity, come in. No. Stop drawing on the wall, Solidity. Just go and put the pen down and go and talk. Go and hang out with your... F- go go to your sisters. It's really... Solidity. Okay, so that enables um, an, any application to be written on top of it, such as a DAP. You know, a decentralized application. 
Okay. That's, that was, yeah. Why do they put the D in? F- it's like iPhone. You could have just called it phone, not DAP. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> G- continue. Okay, so this structure supports all existing and future applications. Oh, uh, okay. So that's like JavaScript on steroids. Yeah, and it lends itself to an environment of constant and immediate development innovation. All right. Wow. So, another facet that uh, sets Ethereum apart from Bitcoin is the support Ethereum continues to receive from the financial and technological communities. Now, companies have recognized the immense power of blockchain technology and uh, cryptocurrency to boost security and efficiency, right? So, when they um, are joining the ranks, okay? So, institutions like Microsoft and JP Morgan- Whoa! have pledged their support to uh, to the development of Ethereum through the formation of what's known as Ethereum, sorry, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. E-E-A for short. Thank you for clearing that up. So the purpose of the alliance is to ensure the potential of Ethereum is realized across a variety of industries. That's incredible. So, like, there's so much happening with not just Ethereum, but, like, all the cryptocurrencies, everything. And the, the big thing about the blockchain technology, which I'd like to cover next week with you, but it's, it, it's not just crypt, it's like not just cryptocurrency. The crypto space is, like, it can be programs and all that kind of stuff, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to look at that one next week. Okay, cool. Well, uh, the next segment, guys, we want to go – we have a Facebook group, and it's called WTF – is crypto space. You guys can search that. Have a look. Come and join because we want to answer your questions. We actually happen to have, Brett, here's, here's the thing. We happen to have a question from oh, the a group question. today. Oh, this is a good. A question for you. So, this is a question from Anwin from Vietnam. Say hi, Brett. Hi, Brett. He wants to know, what is the best Ether wallet for you? Okay, so my top three are this. So, my Ethereum, okay, so that's a portable online wallet, and that's got no private key, but Mm -hmm. uh, easy transportation, uh, really easy to download. Um, Then you've got Jax, okay, so that strong portable online wallet with token exchange built in. Or it could be the guy from Mortal Kombat, uh, the guy with the metal arms, Fatality. (laughs) (laughs) As you <laughs> and Exodus and is the first desktop multi-asset wallet with Shapeshift built in. Okay, there was two terms I did not get in that. So the first one was multi-asset wallet. What is that like? Is that m- like multiple crypto coin, like cu- currencies, crypto? Yeah, absolutely. Crypto space coins and its other electronic assets in the future. It, like we were talking about before, which it might be like uh, open source information and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, you got it. The other one you just said was Shapeshift. Now, okay, what so Shapeshift is, is a company, um, and that uses a direct crypto space currency exchange tool. Um, mm-hmm. We'll put the link in below. It's um, Shapeshift.io. Shapeshift.io. And uh, so that is basically like going to the airport, giving over your Australian dollars, and like exchanging it for, say, the US dollar or wherever you're traveling. That kind yeah, of thing. Spot on. That's exactly right. Well, that is a big information dump. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is our time. We hope you've enjoyed our our podcast, WTF is Crypto Space. If you guys want to join us over in the Facebook group, we have got amazing discussions, Brett. Amazing discussions that are happening over there at the moment. Um, So, if you guys want to ask a question or you want to join or you want to uh, just read some extra information that's not included in the podcast you can go over to wtf is crypto space it's a facebook group go over there say hi um we'll make sure that you get added and and that kind of stuff so ladies and gentlemen i want to thank you so much for joining us in our episode and if you guys want to like subscribe um if you can review that that would be awesome because that gets us up in the charts so people can see us so we can continue to do this more often reach more people and we can make this community just huge so until next time ladies and gentlemen uh, my name's chad and i'm brett let's get excited about crypto space the transition has begun (laughs) 